Latin America is referred to as the Spanish and Portuguese speaking countries in the so-called New World. The northernmost country in South America is Venezuela, my home nation of 30 million, almost the same as Canada, but smaller than the province of British Columbia. In 1897, the first short film ever made in Venezuela was Youngsters Bathing in Lake Maracaibo by Trujillo Duran, a representative of Lumiere's Cinematograph and the forefather of Venezuelan cinema. It was shown in the very first cinema theater in South America, the Baralt, in the western Venezuela city of Maracaibo. On January 1st, 1916, at Teatro Caracas, the first fiction work was released by Enrique Zimmerman, The Lady of the Hibiscus Flower, a parody of Alexandre Dumas, The Lady of the Camellias. By 1925, Caracas welcomed Cine Ayacucho, the largest cine theater of its kind in Latin America, with 1,300 seats. In 1930s, the first synchro sound movie was released in Latin America, in Venezuela. Rafael Rivero's Taboga, a sort of music video by Billo's Happy Boys, a Dominican band. The 1950s was a decade of expansion in quantity and quality, with two films winning awards at Cannes. 1951's La Balandra Isabel Llegó Esta Tarde by Carlos Christensen was the first ever international award for a Venezuela film with Cannes Best Photography Award. And in 1959, Araya by Margot Benacerraf won the Critics' Prize at Cannes. These shed new light on Latin America cinema worldwide with tremendous influence over future Latino filmmakers. The 60s, 70s and 80s were heavily influenced by filmmaker Roman Chalbot and his movies became a reflection of Venezuelan reality. Together with filmmaker Clemente de la Cerda, social commentary was the constant theme that dominated on the screen. 1995's Sicario by José Novoa proved street reality and social commentary was more popular than ever in Latin America as it set attendance records for the year in Biarritz, Havana, Cartagena, Philadelphia, and Tokyo's film festivals, winning many awards and acclaim. 2005's Sequestro Express by Jonathan Jabukovics and Puras Joyitas by Oropesa and Rivero are more examples of social commentary with a subtext aimed at the political, economic, judicial, legislative, and religious establishments. Family. Hello. 
chance. When every second is life and death, you have to play every move like it's your last. Sequestro Express. Since the 1970s, Venezuelan filmmaker Diego Rizquez has made a name for himself for his often controversial biopics about Venezuela's historical figures. With 11 titles as director plus another 22 as writer, producer and production designer, he is worth noting because of his influence on many biopic and other period piece filmmakers in Latin America. With subjects as Simón Bolívar, Francisco de Miranda and Manuela Sanz, Rizquez always stirred debate among audiences. Armando Reverón, one of Venezuela's most influential painters, is now on permanent exhibit at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Since his first work in 1976, A Propósito de Simón Bolívar, Rizquez has constructed a filmography based on Venezuelan and Caribbean history, focusing on the visuals above traditional narrative. This is a short clip from 2011's Reverón, Diego Rizquez's current Venezuelan film on the festival circuit. Set in Macuto, in the Caribbean coast, the story shows the Reveron very few people knew, the recluse in his own world and his finding love in Juanita. award-winning, world-traveling artist. 